Hello guys, Salty Game here, back with another part of Dengen Ropa Trigger Happy Havoc, and let's get started. This is gonna be a final class trial. Since this will be the final class trial, I've come up with a special rule. So listen up! If you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school, you guys win! But if you can't, then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super hard pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep, sure will! You or the... Oh, the mastermind. And that's final? No loopholes? No wiggling out of it later? Of course not! Bears never go back on their word! Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? Are you feeling okay? Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. What is he talking about? You're all the mastermind, aren't you? You're all out to get me! I'm right, aren't I? I knew it! What? You guys have all been working together, haven't you? I have evidence, so I know I'm right! Hey, you stole my line! You're all out to get me. I'm sure of it. I have evidence of my own. What's this evidence? What a coincidence. I, too, have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. Wh what? Wait, hold on. This doesn't make any sense. How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? All three of them think that everyone around them is their enemy. There's no doubt this trap Monkuma said. He said that so we, we, so we would suspect each other. I have something that proves it. You guys have all been working together. I have evidence. Hey, you st you're all out to get me. I have evidence. What a coincidence. Evidence that proves every- Wh what? what? This doesn't make any sense. How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? No, that's wrong. It's not just you three. I have evidence too. What? You too? The evidence you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Well, well, yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. With the picture you have, I'm in it. What? But that can't be right. Because in my picture... See? I'm the only one not in it. I figure as much, in which case... Hero, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Uh, okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty important evidence. This one too, it's just like I thought. So the secret in these pictures has been revealed. Secret or whatever, I don't care! You guys are all in on this together! That's why I'm the only one missing! But you're in my picture! You're the ones trying to trick me! So the whole purpose behind these photos was to get us questioning and fighting with each other. The mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude! What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? Proof that I need to reveal Monkuma's trap. Each photo has certainly something common. There's a connection regarding what person is showing the group photos. And that person is... I got it! In each case, the only one not in the picture is the person who received it. So, in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, she's the only one missing. 
And in the picture Hero got, he's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my photo as well. In other words, Monokuma gave each of us a group photo in which that person wasn't included. And when we each saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? <laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? We know there might be more to this than just Mokuma trying to confuse us. There's something else that bothers me about everyone's pictures. Why is it what's sticking at me? Listen, can I see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. I'm sure there's something unusual about these group fo photos. Why is it compare you to them one more time? Yakio's picture. Hina's picture. Hero's picture. And mine, what's the difference? Something strange about all of them. Something I can't quite pin down. Something. Can you just forget about the photo already? Wait, what is it? Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo? I'm still pissed about that. And on top of that, they went to all that trouble to make it look like we were wearing matching uniforms. Hmm? So you think they're fake? <laughs> no, no, no. I assure you, they're quite real. W what are you talking about? There's no way. Yeah, I don't remember ever taking a picture like that. So it's got to be a fake. I'm sure of it. But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong, I don't remember taking this picture either. But is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? The reason I don't remember this picture isn't necessarily because it's a fake. It might be something other, some other reason. Some, some terrible reason. Unbelievable and unbelievable, but entirely horrifying reason. Amnesia. Now I understand. Let's say that somehow we'd all lost our memories. That could explain it, couldn't it? Oh, I get it. So we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo. Makes sense. As if. You expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult type story? Yeah. We all lost our memories? That's just... crazy! Is it really? It's only natural that they wouldn't believe this. No matter how much they re they, re they refuse. If, it, if that's absolute truth, they have no choice. Can't move forward until they accept it. There's no way to prove it. And there's no way to prove it besides these, those photo pictures. You're saying we all got spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci-fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. No, you don't. So the idea that we all lost our memories 
is totally stupid. Obviously. There must be more evidence than those pictures that we lost those our memories. You're saying we all got spun. Since when did this turn into- I promise you, I haven't- Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. No, that's wrong. Those photos aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. This DVD does the same thing. You're not gonna show us something indecent, are you? What are you talking about? N no, it's nothing like that. It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us. Including you. You lie! I never did any kind of interview. No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The headmaster did, in fact, interview you. What are you saying? I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. Wow, he is the reasonable one for, for, for once. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! It's not that uncommon. To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the Headmaster, right? What were the interviews about? The Headmaster sat each of us down one at a time, and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. What kind of question is that? And how did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me. I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. <laughs> Why? Why would you say yes to something like that? I don't know. I don't remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever. Or even talking to the headmaster about it at all. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? That's just insane. How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, cause it's all true. What? I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed. We only have one path in front of us. <laughs> then we really... Yep, you all totally lost your memory at the same time. This is all <sighs> making my head hurt. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory loss. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie. You figured that part out too, huh? Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. But how could someone just steal our memories? How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains? Would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you. The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. Original motive? What is that? You mean the motive you came up with? To try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, 
So you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else? So I told you that. Well, either way, I have to explain every last remaining mystery. So, why don't we kill Mukuro? True mass mind. That's what we need to expose. That's what we need to expose. So who did it? Who killed her? Whoever did it is the same one who's behind everything. That much I'm sure of. But when you think about it, is the mastermind really here in the school? Of course! They have to be here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Um... What does make me so sure? Exactly! You're just making stuff up. There's no way the Mastermind is here. The Mastermind is probably a million miles away. No. No, that's wrong. There's no question that the Mastermind is somewhere within the school. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center, I found a panel that controls Monokuma. The mastermind must have been using that to control him all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case, there also can be no doubt that the mastermind is one of us. What? Why? Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. Sure, I told you this already, but this killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only ones to take a single step in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. So if the mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. But how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! What? Why me? Cuz! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed! Oh, I get it! The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the mastermind himself, right? So they didn't see Ultra Ego on the screen then. Aw, nuts! You got me! Wait! What are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The Mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. Huh? But I thought we figured that out. She died when she got hit in the back of the head. No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? Mukuro's actual cause of death must have been... I got it! All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. It made it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago. So they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? B what? What if? When we discovered her body, she'd already been dead for several days. If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. That doesn't make any sense. Because... because she had all those wounds before she ever came here. Huh? How do you know that? Isn't it obvious? She was the ultimate soldier, right? So that means... Y you know... You're wrong. <laughs> She denied me <laughs> before I could even say anything. Now it's at the time, Toko. <laughs> Come on, 
I mean, you think I'm... I'm not weird, okay? At least listen to what I have to say before you deny me! If you're so sure we're gonna deny you, why bother saying in the first place? Mukuro's is the ultimate soldier. She must have been in a, a hundred different battles. So, when you think about it, obviously, she got all of those wounds in battle. Let's Are you finished? Wait. You didn't deny me this time, z Okay, let's wait. Let's wait. <sighs> you made me go all cutesy. Don't worry. There wasn't anything cute about it. No, those wounds didn't come from the battlefield. One look at what was written about her. That's become clear. Mukuro was the she must have been so like, obviously. She got all those wounds. No, that's wrong. No, Mukuro didn't suffer those wounds in battle. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered this school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. To uh, be denied so completely... Actually, it's kind of refreshing. <gasps> Maybe it's because of all of Master's training! Training? Anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school. In which case, they could be the very thing that killed her. As a matter of fact, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mukuro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. But if that's what killed her, then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter of what happened last night? Makoto, you said you were attacked in your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several days, Certainly it couldn't have been her. So who was it that attacked you? I am the one who attacked me. I can't think of anyone else. I got it! The one who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me, but I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting a little impatient sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusaba. At least, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise? No, there's no way Mukuro is the one that attacked me. If I didn't see her face. Mukuro had, an had a very obvious femoral heart tattoo, comparing that to the mask attacker. Should be obvious. You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Mukuro Ikusaba! You're wrong. Even without seeing their face, there's another part of the attacker we can use to prove it wasn't her. 
Oh? And what is this other part? Is it the right hand? Or the left hand? Maybe the right foot? Or perhaps the left foot? Or could it be the hips? The most no noticeable fe feature is the tattoo that marked her membership in Fenrar. That tattoo was in a certain easy spot area. You never saw their face, right? So you can't have- I'm telling you now! You're wrong. There's another part of the- Oh? And what is- Is it the right hand? Right hand, I think. Or the left- Maybe the- Or perhaps- Or could it be- The hip? You never saw their- So you can't have any- I I'm telling you now! It was Mukuro- No, that's wrong! Mukuro had a tattoo on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenrir. In other words, a wolf tattoo. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. And there was no such tattoo. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. Uh, yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. Uh, but that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, uh, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah! We were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you. But what about Kyoko? It totally could have been her. Uh-oh! No snappy comeback. Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Borderline can say anything. Kyoko was, remo was, was removing her gloves. Your hands! Felt they can let out gas. It was more than just a little burnt skin. Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I was inexperienced. I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. Kyoko seemed to save her the words as she said, as she said them. And she put her gloves back on. My scars should suffice as proof. Makoto, did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? Nope. No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true mastermind. <laughs> this is just awful! On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively grotesque scars of yours! Uh, sorry, did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings. Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure, as long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? But I'm not cornered just yet! Because if you haven't noticed, the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown. That's true. All we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning. On the contrary, we don't know anything other than that. You're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, with doubt she died after our little killing game began here then somehow she was killed in secret without any of us knowing and after she died who knows how much time went by before we found her right that the culprit stash her somewhere she couldn't have been in the garden the whole time could she if she was she would have been totally decomposed just like your brain then she was being stored somewhere but to hide a body here? To just store it somewhere? It was in the morgue. 
So in one place. I can't think of anywhere. I can't. I can't think of anywhere else. The bike could have been stored. Bio lab. I got it. Mukuro's body was probably kept hidden in the bio lab. The bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? That's right. It's actually set up for use as a morgue, so it's the perfect place to hide a body, and it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. The tarp. Proof that shows bio was carried from the bio lab to the garden. It's like it made its way from the bio lab to the garden. I got it! What makes me so sure the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden is. The tarp that we found in the garden, when I was checking it over again, I noticed something. I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the tarp. Oh, it says Biolab. Holy cow! How'd you notice that tiny little thing? Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have surfaced with perfect timing. This proves that the tarp originally came from the Biolab. In fact, there's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers and put the code on it afterwards. Wow, you made everything sound so amazingly consistent. But that's just a wild guess. Oh, he's sweating. Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved. There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? Worked up? Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the bio lab, you must be getting pretty nervous. Because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? You see, the bio lab contained an inconsistency. One so major it can't be overlooked. Consistent in the bio lab. What's he talking about? La la la! I can't hear you! La 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 la! Such a child. Oh well, just ignore him. I need to pull myself together and think. Consistent in the bio lab, could you be talking about? Hey, by the way, Makoto, what about that one thing? What one thing? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. What? <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message. Is he fretting them? So what do you think? Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Your mom, your dad, your little sister. What do you think has happened to your family? Were they already dead, though? Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop talking about that! Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Get him calm down. Can't let him get to me. He's just saying that because he knows we're getting close to the truth of the bio lab. So I want to shut him up and expose the consistency and slam him with it. The consistency has to be the one area where numbers just don't match up. Oh, so it's bull time. Are battle. you sure about this? That's impossible. Are you sure about this? That's um. impossible. Rawr! Better luck next time. Are you sure about this? That's impossible! I'm not listening! This should prove it! The inconsistency Kyoko's talking about is... The lights! Correct, so... If there are nine lights, it means nine bodies. So there's six people left in the game, that's 15. 
So that means one person is missing. What are you talking about? Uh, what about the lights? One person in this killing game is not actually dead yet. Like I said before, the bio lab also acts as a morgue. And as part of that, a giant refrigerator was installed in there. That's where everyone who's died is stored. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn on. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on, including the one Mukuro was in, and there were only nine. Why does that matter? You gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. Nine plus six equals fifteen, not not sixteen. One's missing. Nine lights don't make sense. Number of lights on, on the there, no number of lights there should be on is. I got it. Ten of the lights should have been on. Any other number is incredibly suspicious. Suspicious? Why? That's simple. Just recall who's died here so far, and it should become clear. That's right. To keep the solving this mystery. Psycho died first. Junko was second. Yon was third. Shihiro was fourth. Mundo was fifth. Taco was sixth, and Hufumi was seventh. Celeste was eighth. Sakura was ninth. Victim ten was Mukuro. Hmm. So ten people in all? That's right. Any other number should make you immediately suspicious. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. <laughs> You're seeing a dead body just up and disappeared? They were never dead to begin with. I got it! The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body, since they actually killed her. And yet, her body was left alone. Then, whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappeared. But if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's executions, there have apparently been ten deaths, but there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number of murders? Because one person is not dead. The reason there are less bodies than murders. Explanation for more murders than victims. Why is that? Why would, why would it take to make sense? Shoot! Oh. Whoops. Oh, shoot. So they're killed twice? I got it. What about if the same person was killed twice? Huh? Killed twice? Officially. Ten murders have been committed so far, but one of the victims may have been murdered, and then murdered again. Murdered and... murdered again? If that's the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? T technically you're right, I guess. But still... something like that... Could easily have happened. No. It is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio lab until the moment we found it in the garden. No, 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 that's crazy talk. She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. 
nothing's gonna become obvious because Kyoko's totally delusional. Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed as? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? Leon Kuwata, Chihiro Fujisaki, Mando Owada, Kiyotaka Ishimaru, Hifumi Yamada, Celestia Lu, whatever, or maybe Sakura Ogami. No, no, no. There's no way anyone was murdered twice. Muko died from the wounds all she had all over her body. Wasn't someone who suffered the same sort of injury? Who is this someone else that Muko was it? Sayaka, Maizo, Junko, and Oshima? It's Junko. Leon Kuchihira, Mando, Kiyotaka, Ishima, Hifumi, Yama, Celestia, Lu, whatever. Or maybe. No, no, no. There's no way anyone was murdered twice! Oh no. Who is this some was it? Junko and Oshima? Leon Chihiro Mondo Kiyotaki Fumi Celestia Lu or maybe No no there's no way anyone was murdered No, that's wrong. Junko, wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? What do you mean? Well, remember what happened to her? She was impaled by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered... Then the similarities match? Yes. And those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one and the same. So let me see if I have this straight. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. Then, it's really true? Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait, so then... What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims, but nine. So there's still one more student. Which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. What? And that's the true identity of the Mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive. She took Junko's body and made it look like she was the one who died. So, Mukuro is still alive! She's gotta be! Total silence? Then I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? Mukuro's alive? The one that still alive is Mukuro, but... Can't really believe that? No, there's no way. There's no way that Mukuro Uksa Ukusaba is still alive. The body we found in the garden. It wasn't Mukuro. Then she's still alive? That's right. She made it look like Junko's body was her. So the mastermind's true identity is Mukuro. What do you say, Monokuma? Do you give up? 
Hmm. That'd be true. There could have been, and that could have been, and that couldn't have been their body we found in the garden. Is that really possible? The body we found in the garden. It wasn't Mukuro. Then she's still alive. That's right. She made it look so the mastermind's true identity is. What do you say, Monica? Hmm. The body we found in the garden. It wasn't Mukuro. Shoot. The body we found in the garden. It wasn't Mukuro. What? Shoot. The body we found in the garden. It wasn't Mukuro. No, that's wrong. Oh, because of, because of the tattoo. No, the body we found in the garden was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Right, Kyoko? She was five foot six inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. Everything in her profile is consistent with that corpse. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. But if Mukuro's not the mastermind, then who's actually still alive? Still may look like they died, but it's actually still alive. So one person could have been. Yup, I knew this. I knew it. I knew it. It's you. Here's my answer. Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. But we saw her get impaled. She died right before our very eyes. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would had to have been some kind of charade. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? Now that you mention it, I gently placed my hand on Junko's li lifeless body. Touch her wrist to check for a pulse, like they do in movies and stuff, but she really is dead. There wasn't anything, el el there wasn't anything else to say. She was gone. I did check, absolutely, and I can say for sure. She was dead. There's no question. Junko was dead. So, the idea that she's still alive... It must be wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad. I guess your conclusion was a dud. <laughs> too bad, too bad. This case hasn't been decided just yet. Oh? You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? Huh? No, of course not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. Huh? The opposite direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived? How could Junko have survived? I checked her, she was damn sure of it. But still, if she were alive somehow, could be that Junko was not the one that died. It wasn't Junko, but someone else entirely. Maybe she used some kind of sword trick. What is it?
Not N. Replay. Oh! Now I understand. That was hard. I didn't, I didn't think of that word. That's it. What if she switched places with someone else? S switched places? That's right. Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place. Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba. Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switched? When could they even have done that? Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Like in Naruto? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. So maybe the whole idea is wrong. There has to be some way. I need to figure out how to explain how they could have switched. I got it! The two of them may have switched places from the very beginning. Can I save? What? From the beginning? Yes, from the moment we first met. If that's when they switched, then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? After all, the one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. Uh, hold on. So you're saying the Junko we first met was actually Mukuro all along? Then we'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, None of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait, but Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion, exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so... this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro, the ultimate despair, teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back? I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? You mean she? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity? When did I do that? 
so he still refuses to admit, but try to see what's all he wants, doesn't matter. Try to figure it out. Try to hide, he tried to hide, hide Juko's identity, and not just once, but twice. The first was time was during our latest investigation. I got it! While I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the headmaster. It wasn't just monitor, the DVD player itself had been apparently turned off. Which of course meant that the that DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Well, Lucy looks like it broke out of service. What just happened so happened to break just now? Now then, when doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. That's what failure is, right? You made sure I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah. If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up. And if Makoto saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter. Th that whole power outage thing was just a fluke. No, it wasn't a fluke. Massmind definitely orchestrated that power outage. And that's, not, and that's not the only time they try to hide Jupiter's identity. Mastermind tried to cover up one other piece of evidence. I can't reveal that. Rawr! Is that all you have to say? Rawr! Rawr! Better luck next time! Better luck next time! Rawr! Better luck next time! Are you sure about this? You're getting all riled up! That's impossible! This should prove it! Junko's missing! How did I not know that? The video wasn't the only thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh, uh. I noticed it just a little while ago. When we were all comparing the photos we'd gotten, in all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. What? What's so unusual about them? The unusual circumstance coming to all these pictures. We don't see her face. I got it. Junko's face. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. It's hard to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. Which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! I believe everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game, she's the true mastermind, and the ultimate despair! 
Now show yourself. Santa do times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the Mastermind have been exposed. No, no, wait, hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything, right now! Oh, no. I have to get this right. What was the true identity? Where did the master keep smooth girl's body? Has my attack me with something. What was it? A knife. When the mask mine, when the mask mask mine attack me, what does that stop them? After their surprise attack failed, the mask mine fled my room. When did the mask mine? What did the mask mine do with the mask after they took it off? What was the condition of the dead body when I first found it in the garden? I couldn't die and find the mystery body because it was got blown up. There. I think that's all right. The killer is you. We met the ultimate fashionista, Junko and Oshima, right after we all arrived here. But that wasn't the real Junko. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusaba. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Her body was kept in the bio lab which had been converted into a moor until Junko decided to put her body to use. Junko dragged the body out of the bio lab, using the tarp to carry her to the garden. She fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko, who'd proven to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive, and hiding somewhere inside the school. So she put on a mask and then attacked me. After making sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one in the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder, and the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma.
the real Junko in Oshima. That's the whole story behind this incident. Well, what do you have to say to that? What? Are you broken again? You can't get out of this, so don't even try. Come on! It's time you finally revealed yourself! Is she gonna do an evil laugh? It's not like you're an endangered species or something. How long do you plan to keep hiding? Give it up, Junko. The game's over. Over? <laughs> Did you really think the story would end once we reached the climax of the case? Wrong! There's still plenty more to go! Oh, she's gonna appear. She doesn't look that different from when we first saw her during the beginning of the game. Is she really that different? We have been waiting! Waiting so very long for peasants like you to appear! Oh wow, her voice is different. If you swear your fealty to us, we will reward you with half of the entire world! We've even drawn up the deed already! We will grant you honor, status, in some of our home cooking! Have you made your choice? Will you serve under us? Oh, did you think I was being serious? Sorry. I was just messing with you. Wait, what? It's been so long since I've had an audience. Even I'm not sure what kind of role I'm supposed to play. This mastermind? She's... She's a real Junko Inoshima. Anyway, looks like I've finally been set free. Having to play Monokuma all the time. Day after day. It was like I was stuck in purgatory. Or like a slow suicide. I get bored so easy, you know? This is not the voice I was expecting. I was more I was expecting more a crazy voice. Your face! Huh? What about my face? What's wrong with my beautiful face? People have told me I'm cuter than a hundred chihuahuas combined. I feel like this isn't the first time I've seen you. No, I do remember seeing it. I'm sure seeing him somewhere. It was definitely before I got to the school. I got it! That's right! It was before I ever came to this school. I remember seeing a magazine cover. And... You were on it! Wow, you have a pretty good memory. I guess that's why you've made it this far, huh? So I was right. Then what you told me in the main hall when this all began... I seen her on tons of magazine covers, but I don't feel like that. But I don't feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality, huh? Oh, we're we talking about my cover folds and junk. Ah, oh, well, of course, those are totally Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah, you know, edit that one back with like comparison junk. Oh, so they aren't real. Sometimes a little lie is necessary to keep things moving along. Wouldn't you agree? That explains why she didn't quite seem the same. Because she was a different person all along. I'm me. And Mukuro is Mukuro. She tried her best. But there's just no way she could have passed as the ultimate fashionista. Two people can never become one as long as the walls of mind and body exist. Not even if they're twins. <laughs> twins! I know. It's such a cliche, right? I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. So basically, Mukuro and I had your stereotypical twin relationship. And she betrayed Mukuro. The older sister, tough and proud. That was Mukuro. The younger sister, smart and cute. That was... <laughs> Me! Junko fucking Anishima! There, that's the voice I was expecting. And together, we were the Despair Sisters! AKA the Ultimate Despair! They're much better. I was like, really? Is this, gonna, is this her personality? This is what I was expecting. Whoa! She's a totally different person now! Like I said, I get bored easy as hell! I even get fucking bored with myself! But if, if you're twins, why do you have different last names? 
Oh, that again? You have any idea how many times people ask me that shit? Maybe it's new to your dumb ass, but it bores me to tears. Answering the same questions over and over? Just make up whatever answer you want. I don't give a shit. The truth's fucking lame anyway. But if she was your twin, that means you killed your own sister? She is crazy. And for reasons deeper and darker than the ocean. <laughs> As if. Well, I suppose I'd better explain. For my plan to work, someone had to be able to control the killing game from behind the scenes. The so-called mastermind had to operate Monokuma, keep an eye on everyone, things like that. But after looking at the situation, I determined it would be impossible for Mukuro to perform such duties. Does she have multiple, multiple personalities? Because naturally, she turned out to be the letdown of the family, leaving me behind to run off and join some band of mercenaries. Such a disappointment. So, I decided to play the role of director and have her join the rest of you in your school life. I could have let her work alongside me, but she would have been useless to me that way. Besides, 15 students seemed like a solid number to start with. Of course, the fact that she was the ultimate soldier posed something of a problem. She had what I call the three atrocities. Atrociously rank, atrociously filthy, atrociously repulsive. It was atrociously clear just how out of touch she was with the rest of society. Meanwhile, my ultimate fashionista status has an undeniable appeal that I didn't want to go to waste. And that's... why you switched identities? Sadly, her inability to match my personality was even greater than I'd calculated. It was a lost cause. She was nothing more than a bit player, an extra unworthy of lines. Being the utter disappointment that she was, anyone would have expected her to get killed off right away, which is precisely why I killed her. To meet everyone's expectations. But she was ultimate soldier though. Couldn't she have killed everyone else in secret? That can't be your only reason, can it? Well, no, of course not. I also did it to avoid becoming bored. I've never been a stickler for following a plan to the letter, you know? Whoa. If I planned everything out and knew just what was gonna happen, that'd be so boring. So she does have multiple personalities. So I changed things just a bit and decided to use Mukuro to make a little point. In other words, Mukuro's death was a one-sided, premeditated act of betrayal, just as I suspected. When Mukuro was killed, she must have been as surprised as anybody else. What? Huh? This wasn't supposed to... Why me? <laughs> so you figured it out? Well, you're right! There's no way Mukuro could have pulled off such a convincing performance, but she did teach you all a very valuable lesson, don't you think? How can you talk like that? You sacrificed your own sister! How does that not even bother you? What? I sacrificed her? That's what's got you so hot under the collar? Jeez, misunderstandings sure are scary. We were the ultimate despair, you know? So we never had any kind of hope or expectation. Nope, I felt despair as long as I can remember. Like I never should have been born at all. Oh, she was depressed or sad. When I was born, I cried tears of total despair. So that's why for us, it's not a big deal whether we die or kill. We're just those kinds of people. We can do anything. We've always been filled with despair. So when we do something, we go all the way and live without regret. So you just murdered your own sister and didn't think anything of it? That's not true at all. Another personality? We were twins. How could I not be sad? That's why it gets me so excited. Whoa. Huh? Killing my precious sister with my own two hands. That act is filled with so much despair. You can't help but put a super in front of it. It's like super, 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 super despair. No, more than that. Super, 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 super despair. It just feels so good. What the hell is wrong with you? She's crazy. And my sister, too. In that moment of death, I think she must have felt that despair. After all, to be murdered by your own sister, and only as an example to someone else, she must have died feeling such excruciating hopelessness. I'm so jealous of her. 
super jealous. I knew you couldn't be just some ordinary person. You're some kind of abnormality. Turning your own despair into some kind of fetish. Abnormality doesn't even begin to describe it. Like, genocide Jill is crazy for sure, but this is a whole nother level of nuts. No, I think genocide Jill is just crazy. I mean, she killed plenty of people. You're saying I don't compare to some lowly beast that can only kill the weak, right? So, I'm hopelessly attractive, hopelessly brilliant, hopelessly athletic. I'm the hopelessly perfect ultimate human. No. I don't think there's anything perfect about anything you just said. Yeah, Master's way more perfect. Cause on top of everything else, he's got that noble blood. Hmm. Don't you mean had that noble blood? What did you just say? What do you mean by that? <laughs> you still haven't figured that part out yet? Man, you guys are so slow! You haven't even solved all the mysteries, and yet here you are, yap yap yapping away! Are you talking about our memories? You've already solved this mystery, right? I'm the killer! So how about the next one? Okay, let's save, just in case. Time to save. I have a bad feeling about this. Maybe you should solve the riddle of your missing memories. Then you can start gloating. Damn straight. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to solve all these mysteries. And then we'll have our victory. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, then let's just get straight to the point. What memories did you steal from us? When the group pictures were taken and those interviews, it must mean... I got it! It must have something to do with our entrance day exams! No fair! At least give us a hint! Your brains are like sponges! All drippy and leaky! I already gave you a hint before! All the memories you lost share something in common with a few other things! Do you recall? Thinking back to what Momokuma told us. The memories that are stolen from us and what they must relate to. Uh, is this one or this one? I got it! You're talking about the motives you provided to try and get us to kill each other, right? So you do remember after all. Well... I would hope you wouldn't forget something so important. It was stupid of me to even ask. I apologize from the bottom of my heart for my bad manners. So then, let me ask you another question. Did you notice that each motive I presented you had a specific theme to it? A theme? Yep, you got it. So that's my question to you all. When Sayaka was murdered, what was the theme of the motive I presented? The theme of the murder for the murder. Welcome will give us the first murder. murder. Mokuma gave us those DVDs. On my DVD was the footage of my family. Psycho's fur was her and friends. They had a dream they all shared. So for the first murder, the motive we were given was... I got it! The driving force behind the motive you presented us with at that point was human connections. Ding, ding, ding. You got it. Remember those DVDs I gave you guys? Each video showed the total destruction of your most important relationships. For example, your family. For example, your friends. I ruined all those relationships and showed you the results. It was to motivate your desire to escape and kickstart your urge to kill. But still, what a cruel thing to do. You're the one that did it! Yes, well... I'm perfectly happy to accept your disapproval. Okay! Time for the next question! Um, so... What was the theme for the second motive? For second murder, the most theme was... That's when I got those weird envelopes from Monokuma. Mine mentioned how I, wet the, how I used to wet the bed. So the theme for that time was... I got it! It was... Our past, right? Makoto got it right again! That time, the theme was... 
embarrassing memories and secrets! Yeah! <laughs> and the whole reason Mondo did what he did was to protect his secret. So, how long do you plan on dragging this out? Relax, relax. Okay, on to the next question. So, what was the motive for the third murder? The third, the theme for the third murder was. Where's the last turn the murder was? She wanted to buy a European castle and live there. A bunch of handsome men. So the time the motive for murder was. I got it! It was money, wasn't it? Greed. Seek and destroy! Hell yeah, you got it again! Goddamn straight it was money! Celeste killed Hifumi and Taka for a little personal gain! Her greed led to all kinds of death and destruction! What's the point of all this? Why are you making us go through this case by case? For despair? <laughs> Don't worry, sweet cheeks. Just one more to go. Now, can you tell me the motive behind crazy ass Sakura's crazy ass death? Motive in the case of Sakura's death was. What was it that made Sakura decide to kill herself? It had to do with Monkum exposing Sakura's secret. So the theme of the, of, the mo mo of the motive in that fourth case was. Betrayal. I got it! In her case, it was betrayal. Precisely. You see... Once I revealed Sakura's betrayal, that led to everything that came afterwards. Anyway, it looks like you answered all of my questions correctly. How painfully delightful. But what's the point? What meaning is there in asking those questions now? Relationships? Secrets? Money? Betrayal? These are all pretty standard motives, right? The most normal of normal. Totally middle of the road. But of course, those aren't the only motives that exist in this world. In fact, there are as many reasons to kill as there are people on Earth. They compel humans to kill each other, bringing despair to the world. This is what we refer to as the Seed of Despair. Seed of Despair? Just as water, air, and food promote growth in living things, the seed of despair also needs nourishment. And that nourishment is hope. Despair can grow only in the presence of hope. Two sides of the same coin, divided by a razor-thin line. Such is hope and despair. How much longer is this stupid speech of yours? Weren't we discussing our missing memories? Why are you trying to change the subject? If you would listen, you would see I'm not changing the subject. We are discussing your memories. What I'm trying to say is, the seed of despair is closely tied to your own memories. <sighs> How so? You see, by taking away your memories, I gave you hope. Of course, that hope merely existed to be consumed by despair. Was the world destroyed destroy or something? Like, what happened to the world? How could taking away someone's memories give them hope? And plus, you haven't given us any hope anyway! Is that so? All you've been able to think about during your time here is how to escape, right? The mere fact that that's what you want proves I gave you hope. What are you talking about? If none of you wanted to escape this school, the killings never would have taken place. None of you want to escape the school. Oh. That is why we took your memories. So that you would have the desire to leave. The only reason we want to leave is because you took our memories. Is that what you're saying? So it's pretty obvious that a disaster happened. Occurred. A disaster occurred. And the world is in ruins. <laughs> Correct mundo. Which means if we did have our memories, then we wouldn't want to leave. 
Do I understand that right? What? Why the hell would having our memories make us not want to leave? Come on, Hagakure, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> A most troubling thought, isn't it? But it's not enough. I want more distress, more despair. I put so much effort into creating hope in order to feed your despair and make it grow. So, just like Crazy Eddie slashing his prices and passing the savings on to you, let me give you a hint! Huh? Really? Then hurry up and tell us! Okie dokie! Like they say, seeing is believing! I'd like for you to see the outside world! The outside world? You mean the world beyond the school walls? So something really did happen out there. Now are you interested in what I have to say? You wanna see what's out there? Hoo 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 hoo! I wanna see too. See your faces sink into despair. <laughs> now then, open sesame! Behold! The world beyond the school walls! This is the outside world you've all been so anxious to claw your way back into. Well, cool my faces. So Mon Kuma took over the world? What the Dangerous. The world has grown so very dangerous. That's what this means. What are you talking about? None of this makes any sense! What... What am I looking at? This is a scene from a movie or something, right? What you just saw, all of you should recognize it. To recognize it? What about you recognize? This whole thing is insane. That world is locked away within the memories that were taken from you. If you can't remember, please just try. Do your best to try and recall. <laughs> Kick your brain in the ass, cause it's up to that gray lump whether you live or die. I don't remember, ain't a fucking excuse no more. Cause now it's time for the final class trial. Come on, bitches, remember or die. What the fuck happened outside? You want us to remember or whatever, but when it comes to that crazy confusing video you showed us, I don't understand a damn thing. What's the meaning of the footage we saw? Is this another one of your practical jokes? I mean, you're telling us to remember, but what am I supposed to be remembering? If nobody can remember anything... Okay. No, that's wrong. She can remember. Actually, she might remember. Uh, who might remember? The other Toko. Genocide Jack. 